Okay, it's a CES meeting and the and it's June 14th of 2023. We have two topics today if we manage to get to them. The first topic, long planned, is Shadow Realm HTML integration and we have all the part people we need to have that conversation. Um and then if we happen to have time toward the end of that, uh uh Mark and Nicolo uh uh, well, Nicola would like to talk to, to us and especially Mark about reentrance of lexical names in module scope and how that relates to deferred module exports. Um, so, uh, please, someone take it away. Uh, so I, I can start if we want um, to tell the story as I see it right now, and we can go from there. So uh, I was working on uh, doing the Shadow Realms implementation in Firefox. Um, I did the shell implementation late last year. And I did the, you know, I implemented the host hook uh, for Gecko. And then I sort of went, but I don't really want to do the Gecko half right now. And, you know, maybe I can convince somebody on the DOM team to do that. And so I didn't do it. So then I actually, went ahead and Shadow Realms got to stage three and we have been talking about this and I uh, when Apple accidentally shipped Shadow Realms I was like man I should really come back and circle back to this and actually look at this so I started doing the integration and I wrote some patches and then I realized that um, I had totally misunderstood the state of the testing um, at the time so we have the testing for Shadow Realms on the HTML side consists of the IDL harness tests for the various interfaces. So my uh, misunderstanding was that I thought the IDL harness tests actually, you know, tested the actual interface. But all they do is actually test whether or not you see a name and whether or not it has the associated properties and methods with the appropriate um, property descriptors. That's it. That's all the tests. And so I took my patches that had enabled some of these things inside of Shadow Realms, and I started actually trying to write tests for them. And lo and behold, they blew up in my face, crashing, etc. And the more I dug into it, the more I realized, like, this is going to turn into a huge amount of work. Um, and I am concerned uh, that, A, we don't have enough testing. Um, like, the HTML integration part of it has, to a first approximation, no testing, and it needs it. Um, the actual act of testing this is going to reveal a lot of questions about things like whether or not it makes sense. Um, so um, I don't know how to pronounce their name, so uh, somebody feel free to correct me, but MS Tuger uh, came along and did a whole bunch of pull requests on a bunch of web standards, changing them to be exposed star, and, you know, that was, I had taken that as a to-do list. Um, are uh, and I, it turns out that like, in some of these cases, they're in a wonky state. So for example, uh, the performance uh, and user timings group, they actually reverted their changes because they were causing some, you know, uh, spurious test failures and you know there was this catch-22 situation with their standard where they were like well nobody's implemented it so we're not going to have it in there but of course nobody will implement it unless it's in there so I thought okay well what if I go and I try to do that and then it turns out that like well in shadow realms we don't actually have a performance object we have no performance mixing and so we have this idea of like you can create a performance mark but without a performance object the question becomes like, well, where do you actually get that performance object? Um, you can then do things like try to delegate to the window. And, and this whole thing is just a mess, is what I'm trying to say. And like, I'm, I'm not, my current plan, um, depending, like if, if nothing actually comes out of this meeting, is that I'm going to shelve these patches and just wait. Um, because every browser who actually has this, who tries to implement this, is going to run into these same problems, and I'm not going to be able to fix these questions. Um, yeah. Oh, well, sorry, I have one more concern on my list that I need to mention, 
which is that I am also concerned that the web platform is unprepared for the Shadow Realm Global, um, which is to say that uh, when you look at web platform code, when it talks about globals, there's a heck of a lot of times where it goes, well, if it's a window, I'll do this. If it's a worker, I'll do that. Or worse, it goes, if it's a window, I'll do this. Otherwise, it must be a worker and does that. And I am very concerned that we are going to run into real problems when we try to mix all of this stuff together. Uh, so I have thoughts about a bunch of parts of that. For for the for that last one, um, about if it's a window this, if it's a worker that, uh, the the wording that I tried to put in the HTML spec was that those things would refer to what the I called it the principal realm, the the one that underlies the shadow realms. So you go like up the chain into into what actually started it, and then you check whether it's a window or a worker. Um, about the performance object not existing, uh, that's a that's a real problem. Like the crypto object could also exist on the on that global uh, on the shadow realm global, and the problem is that right now exposed equals star. Uh, being used for shadow realms is just it's just not really a sufficient mechanism because it doesn't let us add those those attributes. We should really specify the shadow realm global as another normal global object, I think. Well, it has uh, to specify, like you have the shadow realm global scope, which is a specified object, like it has IDL written for it. Um, and then from there, the shadow realm global scope needs to have things like in the case of performance, it needs to actually have the performance mix in, uh, put into it. Yeah. Um, so I think we can do that. I mean, I think the, the thing about that group taking out the performance stuff, I think it's fine for them to do that given that implementations haven't followed through, but we can just be referencing their PR. Um, that, that, so uh, to be clear, I actually, I, I wanted to highlight the performance thing as an example of like, um, one of my concerns here with Shadow Realms is that uh, because it sits on this, um, it sits right on this boundary between HTML and JavaScript, I am concerned that what has happened, particularly from the TC39 perspective, like where, like sitting there wearing my TC39 hat as much as possible, is that when we were doing reviews, and like this was the case for Mozilla, when we did our internal reviews of, of Shadow Realms, and I did my initial implementation of Shadow Realms, there's a lot of things where it was like, oh, okay, this is fine. This is easy. We did it, you know, implemented all of it. It looked fine. And we implemented the host hook. And what I'm concerned about is, is that now that I've actually gone and tried to implement the other side of the host hook, that we took a lot of complexity and we just sort of uh, dusted it under the rug uh, and called it the host hook. And that, um, like, I'm not sure that we as Mozilla would have even supported Shadow Realms going to stage three had we understood the, like, level of complexity. Like, this was this was one of those unfortunate scenarios where we reviewed it as the Spider Monkey team, and we just sort of took it as an article of faith that the hook was going to be no issue. And the people we had in the meeting, there were a couple of people from the browser, but there were not enough people who had enough deep uh, understanding of what was going to be involved with exposing a new global on the web. And now that I'm starting to look at it, I'm like, I don't think we should have, like, I, I'm concerned about this, uh, that like my concern is, is that this is either going to be un literally unimplementable um, in the sense that like, we're going to get into situations where, you know, to come back to the question of like, what global you use, um, I, so for the purposes of performance mark, I, I tried the idea of like, okay, well, we delegate to the creating global. But then this actually breaks because, for example, um, there are requirements that say, you know, if your global is the window, you have restrictions on performance mark. So in Shadow Realms, now you inherit the restrictions of that, which is weird because from a user perspective, you shouldn't really know who your enclosing global is. And so now it's like, what are we doing there? I don't see why you shouldn't, why you should be totally unable to see who your enclosing global is. So for, for some background here, from the perspective of TC39, none of us especially were 
uh, pushing for having all these web APIs be exposed in Shadow Realms. This was an interest in, uh, this was an interest raised by uh, web standards people who wanted to make sure that it wasn't kind of too sharp of an edge between TC39 designed things and uh, web designed things. Uh, so they wanted to make sure that their web things were available so that it wouldn't be this break in the abstraction model. Uh, if Mozilla's web people now feel that it shouldn't be exposed, that's like a legitimate position to take. And we should, uh, it would be great if that were like expressed. So if, especially if it turns out to be unimplementable, that would be a pretty strong argument for just not exposing these things. Um, if there's a particular API that has problems, I think we can just expose it, exclude that particular API. Um, aside from the things you raised, there was also a question which remains unresolved about which APIs we do expose, because the uh, an earlier draft had this, uh, it had a pretty inconsistent uh, notion for which things it exposed and which things it didn't expose. Anna asked about this and said, hey, what's the logic that you're using here? Um, and then nobody really followed up on that. And since then, there have been different things raised in this group from, from Matthew, for example, saying we should expose significantly more things uh, like fetch. And I was kind of pushing for, well, we should you know, not expose things that do, that do IO still. That was our previous organizing principle. Um, I wanted to conclude on that question. If there, um, if there's a particular technical issue with a particular API, I think we should we should look into it. I don't so, think it I don't think it's fair to say that this was just like randomly swept under the rug. We had like a lot of debate about the about the nature of this over a long time, and we're trying to understand all these all these things. Yeah. So one thing, and then I want Carity to speak because I see the hand. Uh, the one thing I would say is like when I I just performance is like my my case in point of being like. As I look at it, I see real problems that I'm concerned about. Um, and some of this just comes down to like a lack of testing and a lack of like infrastructure around like what is the actual model that was expected? What is the uh, intention of this supposed to be when we implement the hook? Um, so Carity's next because I should shut up. Yeah, I was confused about what. Daniel was saying and what you were saying, I feel that what you were saying is that it is impossible to implement if we don't have those APIs exposed in the shadow realm global object. Is that what you're saying? Or you're saying they should not be there because then it makes it more difficult to implement. I'm, I'm not sure. Well, my concern is that as specified today, the set of exposed um, interfaces may turn out to be either like nothing is unimplementable that's actually not true but extraordinarily challenging to implement um i'm using performance as an example of some hit place where uh the yeah, exposed attribute was applied to it with the intention that it's like ah yes this is a simple change a simple pr that obviously should just work but as a result of the actual exposure and trying to implement it, you start to see that it's not as simple as simply marking the exposed star. There are dependencies that are not exposed this way. And then trying to resolve those dependencies gets into some hairy, weird questions about like, what should you be able to observe or what are we comfortable with being able to uh, determine about things like what is your enclosing global? It's still unclear to me what what does that mean? Like if, 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 if the pragmatic question would be, is it going to be easier to have a shadow realm that does not expose almost none of these APIs? Um, Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Like dropping one of the, one of the potential outcomes here is that the answer is, is that we drop the host hook and we say that a shadow realm is just a very primitive realm that if you want to access anything outside, you, the user, are responsible for pushing the things in, exposing them appropriately. And maybe the correct answer here, like I have a little idiom that I use in order to like put something into the shadow realm under a name. Maybe we bless that idiom as like, ah, here's how you create your list of like imports and here's how they work. Um, 
Yeah, that That's was it. the original design, and we would be fine with returning to that design. I think you should talk, if you can talk to your web platform people about whether they would be fine with that, that would be really helpful. Yeah, that was the original design. Like, you have nothing there. Uh, it makes it more difficult, but then it still allow you to do a lot of things that we wanted to do with Shadow Realm. Yeah, I... Like to be fair, like to like when I'm wearing my like Mozilla hat here, I'm very much wearing my like Spider Monkey Team Mozilla hat. Um, and you know, this is an unfortunate nature of like organizational boundaries is that I haven't been super in like paying attention to the HTML half of these conversations. Um, so there no. may be a little more uh, willingness to to tackle grossness than I have, but uh, I am definitely unsure of the current state and so uh to before letting letting go of the queue uh the when you say all these hooks there are hooks that definitely needs to be there like all the things in, involved into the module uh module system they need to be there um i suspect that those are not the concern but the other ones no this is this is entirely the like I can't remember the title right now, but the the web platform host hook, which is like, what are the global what are the global things that are exposed inside of that global? Um, you know, what are the names that you see inside of the global when it is created? And I think Mark is next. Yeah. So uh, I just want to express strong enthusiasm for removing um, the host hook. Uh, I, I'm really happy to hear that. Um, that you're running into considerations that um, might push you to advocate for that. And, part and in particular, I want to very much support what Dan said about drawing a line at IO. If we, if, um, you know, if, if some web platform APIs still make it implicitly uh, into new shadow realms, um, but there's a new line to be, new restrictive line to be drawn, uh, that drawing the line at I/O would be great because you know the the and the way to think about all this is uh, this is intended to be a mechanism that facilitates isolation and the more I/O abilities you endow to the thing um, implicitly, the less isolated it is. Um, so, um, so just to to also emphasize, I, basically, I'm I'm like very much in agreement with everything that that um, that's been said. But to to uh, I want to, in particular, alert you that the nothing, the definition of adding nothing is um, uh, uh, raises the issue about what's the baseline because if the baseline is just what TC39 standardizes as JavaScript, uh, then you're going, there's going to, you're going to run into an argument that I think has a good resolution, but you should be prepared for the argument, which is uh, what about the small number of things that are standardized on the web side, not standardized on the JavaScript side, uh, but that are universal uh, and powerless like text encoder, text decoder as a canonical example. Uh, and I think the answer is that we just apply criteria like they're IO free and powerless and, um, uh, and then we go and, and universal across uh, other hosts of JavaScript. Um, and then we go ahead and add them to the list of things we're accepting. And that's just TC39, the, the 262 standard citing other standards, just like we cite the Unicode standard. We can cite the web standard for text encoder and text decoder if we decide to include that. It does not need to be an impediment to, to, to defining a larger nothing. So, so we, we previously discussed the possibility of citing which web standards we would include, and we decided that we were okay with a host hook instead, which would give us sort of less power here. Um, I don't want to go back on that decision. I think I think the uh, the range of options we should be considering are between not having any uh, any web APIs be included in Shadow Realms and on the other end having uh, this set of web APIs that are 
that are um, kind of pretty cross-platform be included, uh, but that don't do any IO. Matthew has previously suggested that we add fetch. I've been very confused by that suggestion. Uh, Matthew, do you want to like defend that point of view or do we want to just conclude on this no IO thing? Yeah, the, <clears throat> the argument was that everything in the shadow realm is going to be uh, configurable, uh, effectively configurable. So any powers like IO can be removed anyway. And even in uh, the TC39 uh, defined APIs, uh, some for some use case, some might need to be uh, patched or removed like date.now. Uh, so it's not it, like depending on the use cases, uh, it really depends on the use cases. And one of the major use cases is to be able to provide an environment uh, that simulates uh, another environment where, where, for example, okay, one of the use cases is test. Uh, and having to shim uh, a fetch API and pass it over the callable boundary is extremely complicated. Uh, so I, like from an ergon my argument was from an ergonomics point of view. I don't see the, the reason why we should exclude IO APIs when those IO APIs are extremely difficult to re-implement on top of the callable boundary. Why is fetch in particular? I mean, given that everybody uh, uses the callable boundary by first implementing a general membrane on top of it, once you have a membrane mechanism on top of the callable boundary, why is it hard to do fetch? That's the thing. There are some use cases that do not require a membrane. Yeah, I don't care about those. For the, for those that have a membrane. Right, but for, for just just let's, 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 can, can, can we can we stay on the narrow question first? If you already have a membrane, is there is there any particular special difficulty in implementing fetch? No, but I would like to consider all use cases of the of Shadow Realm API, and not all use cases require a membrane. Okay, so the use cases that don't so why are use cases that don't require membrane but do require fetch and especially compelling category? Because um, you know, use cases that don't require a membrane but do require X in general, where X is hard to emulate without a membrane. Well, if X is hard to emulate it without a membrane, we have a membrane off the shelf that we can use, then that's a way to solve the hard to hard to emulate X. Because I, I, so I I'm, I'm sympathetic with uh, Matthew's position because I've been exposed to, uh, for example, debugging code inside a membrane is very, very challenging. Um, so something like a test framework where the tests are executed inside the realm. Um, if the test is using fetch or using console log, it's doing any of the normal stuff, then it becomes really difficult. But at the same time, I feel that some of these could be not necessarily virtualized through a membrane, but it could be done like a library that you implement and then some basic implementation for the boundary to, to cross the boundary for certain things that you know you can do outside. So all the code is still is in the, in the shadow realm environment, um, makes it easier to debug and so on, but it, it is not native code. It's just someone is running that code there. But yeah, it's, it's just going to be more difficult for people to use the shadow realm for things that are no membrane because membranes are complicated. I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll not even talk about fetch, I'll, I'll talk about console log. Well, console log is actually pretty straightforward. It's a sync that can mostly be emulated for, uh, like you can replace console log and, and, and just generate a, uh, a string and then send that out. It's fairly easy. Not really. I mean, console log does a lot of things with the with the object that is given to it. Um, so there's some some details there. I think the the idea of adopting the callable boundary in the first place is that it's you can deal with it. If we thought that it wouldn't be possible to suitably communicate across the callable boundary, then we wouldn't have adopted it. 
Yeah. So yeah, that's cool. why I'm that's cool. why I'm really confused by this by this fetch argument. Yeah, that I agree with with Garrity that there are other ways to do it besides a membrane. We using the the callable boundary mechanism directly. Yep. I think I next on the queue, my my the, the issue with errors I think is very interesting ones. I want to get Matthew um, uh, opinion on that because I I think that that will be interesting. Just to describe the problem is like um, there are two places where you might be interested on in knowing that there was an error. Uh, uncut error uh, triggered by the code running inside the membrane. Uh, that could be from outside the membrane, uh, sorry, uh, from inside the realm or from within the realm itself, that the program that you have running inside the shadow realm uh, wants to capture some of these exceptions and do something about it. Um, and it could be that code running outside of the membrane, that's the realm. Um, also, it's interesting on knowing that there are errors that are happening there that are not caught by the program itself. And um, up to this point, we were talking about making the global object, um, basically introducing some of the DOM APIs to control error uh, and making a global object a, a event target and introducing all these DOM APIs into the shadow realm so you could listen for uncut errors inside, unhandle errors inside uh, the realm. Um, if, if, if those APIs are not going to be there, we'll probably need to have a way for people to uh, handle those exceptions uh, from within or from outside. I, I, I believe if we don't have that inside the realm, we can do it outside of the realm through the constructor. And then the user is responsible for piping that back into the shadow realm to tell the program inside the shadow realm that there was an error that they didn't handle correctly. Something like that is possible. It would not require having those APIs there, but just, just something to think about. So for, for context in the earlier version where we didn't expose any web APIs, we just said, oh, you get the window on error treatment from the surrounding you know, parent realm. Matthew, do you have a? Oh, right. Sorry, I my connection dropped for like thirty seconds, and I did not hear anything Dan said. I just said really briefly the the uh, the previous behavior was that on the on error callback was just called in the parent realm, and you just didn't get information about which realm the error was thrown in, which is okay, I think. It, it's a feature request that's not being met. Yeah, I thought, so I, I gotta admit, I'm a little pitched out on this, but um, what we defined is for errors thrown inside a shadow realm to be, uh, dispatched to the Shadow Realm's global event target, uh, the honor event to be raised there. And if it is not handled there for it to be re-raised on the parent realm or on the root realm? Root, only root, yes. Yeah. Um, and so you're saying that is, that, is, that is not happening or? No, we, at that point we can continue having it. Uh, the other part, the part that you were able to observe things that were happening inside the realm by using the global being an event target, you can listen for the uh, the errors that might be uh, unhandled errors inside that particular realm. Um, so that way the program running inside can get access to these unhandled errors. Uh and that well, with what Matthew is saying, that if these hooks and these APIs are not going to be inside the shadow realm, then you have no way to capture those errors inside the shadow realm. You have to delegate that to someone uh, 
but since the root doesn't have access to three levels deep, it will not be able to communicate back to you. So most likely we'll have to introduce a new API at the shadow realm uh, constructor level that you provide some sort of callback that is going to be called if an error is not handled correctly inside the realm, so you get that thing. And now you decide how are you going to communicate that back to the shadow realm and the assumptions that you will not be able to really uh, give the original error can synthetically create an error for them or something like that. Yeah. I mean, it gets, a, it gets tricky in terms of handling error if the DOM APIs are not going to be there. I'm, I'm a little confused. This, are we talking about, we're talking about uncaught errors? Yeah, unhandled errors, yeah. But, well, uncaught errors and or unhandled rejections. The, those are two different problems too. But an uncaught, what does an uncaught error mean in the shadow realm? I guess it's it, it's for an execution that started with a host API then. So for example, like a set, uh, a set timeout that was uh, initiated in, inside a, a shadow realm. It, it can be uncaught. Uncaught means, and, and, and rooted in, uh, in the shadow realm means it didn't cross. Uh, it, it didn't originally cross a uh, callable boundary. It wasn't a call initiated from uh, from another realm, right? Right. So the set timeout example, yeah. yeah. I mean, both of them. Uh, if, if you evaluate from outside, you, you get it. You get you. You can try catch that. Um, right. But if if something is happening there, it's throwing an error no one is really capturing that it goes all the way to the root you're going to get that in the root and then what so can i just interject for a second here um this whole conversation kind of like we've got a little away from the original topic here i'm like i actually just want to raise the point that like my original topic actually is very applicable here which is to say if we had tests that were written for these web APIs that inside using them inside, consuming them inside of a shadow realm, we would have concrete experience about how to do this. Like this whole conversation is going off in very abstract directions, but like, well, if you could, what if this, if this, that, and it's like, what if instead it started from a concrete basis of like, can we even represent the web platform tests for these particular objects that we want to represent inside of a shadow realm in a way that's actually usable or ergonomic at all, right? Because I actually think that a lot of this conversation makes total sense and that there's gonna be problems here, but the way to discover and actually build them would be to sit down and write the tests and like have someone actually use this interface deeply and thoroughly and actually consume these web APIs. Well, I'm getting confused because uh, I think the whole conversation is like, if we are not going to expose DOM APIs inside the shadow realm because it is too complicated, um, then there are certain features that are needs to be somehow resolved without exposing those existing DOM APIs. Well, I mean, it like. If you eliminate that, if you eliminate the host hook, that's one thing. I know that there are people who, for whom that is actually a problem, right? There are people for whom, you know, the decision, I, like I can't speak for all of Mozilla, but I know that there are people, you know, who want um, Shadow Realms to not reflect just the TC39 contents. And, you know, Mark mentioned text decoder as the canonical example, and I think it's a great example, right? But uh, this whole conversation about error handling has spiraled off into this abstract direction where I'm like, but we have a, you know, we started this conversation with like one of the problems with trying to implement this is that there are no tests. And as I implement it, I discover problems. And if we had a set of test cases and we could represent like, how do you catch an error and unhandled rejection? And like, do we need that? Can we figure out a, you know, normal callable boundary thing? Like all this sort of stuff. And like, I think there's actually a lot of meat on the bone to be found by examining this in a really thorough way. 
I'm also just saying I'm not doing that work um, because that's out of scope for like my commitment to like working on shadow realms. Um, but like, I, it feels like we have gone off in a very abstract direction where there's concrete steps to be taken. Oh, I, I don't, I don't think this direction is that abstract because it's one of the things that people have through other notions of, of realms. Anyway, um, through other APIs for the same thing. It's something that we have years of experience with. Anyway, it's um, the point is taken that we should have web platform tests that are more complete than what we had previously. Does anybody want to sign up to do that? The champions listed for the proposal are D. Herman, Garrity, E. Wrights, Leo, Leo Balter, Rick Waldron, Legisicas. Anybody want to take this action item among the champion group? or the wider community? Thing is previously, uh, Salesforce was, was sponsoring work on this from Egalia, that sponsorship ended. So I think that that made some of the progress slow down. Then in the, in the terms of, in the context of that sponsorship, a lot of both of the spec work and the, you know, web IDL harness work was, was done previously. Uh, the other thing that I want to suggest that we take as an action item to follow up on, especially for Shu and Matthew uh, Gaudet, is to uh, get in touch with your browser's web platform team to see if they would be open to the change that Matthew raised, uh, floated, of not, um, of not exposing web APIs, given the, the various kinds of complexity. And I if would there, to you would be opposed to that. Okay, cool. Um, Sorry, not opposed to reaching out. I have reached out. We would be opposed to having Shadow Realms with only 262 built-ins. Okay, great. So Matthew, given that you have this implementation experience, uh, you mentioned the, that you found issues with performance. Do you think you could list a little bit more about what issues you found in the past that will probably help whoever ends up writing tests to make sure that they like have tests that get at the issues that you notice. Yeah, I mean, I can open another issue on the GitHub. Um, that's fine. Uh, yeah, that'd be really great. I think overall, if it if there's a certain number of APIs that have especially more problems, then we should just remove those those APIs. Um, if it's a particular list of them. If it's something more general, then I don't know what we should do exactly because we have this opposition to only supporting the 262 APIs. Yeah, I mean, like I will put up the performance issue. Um, doing some cursory investigation, I am concerned that it represents a more uh, pervasive issue that's going to happen, you know, and some of this, I think, will be uh, fixed by, like, writing tests will identify some of this, you know, when you write a test or, like, you try to take a web, uh, like, a WPT test and uh, address, like, issues of, like, what happens if you have differential behavior between, you know, Windows and workers, for example, and how should a shadow realm behave in that case? Um, this this will like naturally act as a forcing function for a lot of these questions. Um, well, I, I can answer that one question right now, which is that shadow realms should generally act like the realm that they're enclosed. They should generally act like the window or the worker, depending on whether they're in a window or worker. Isolating a shadow realm from being able to detect that it's embedded in one of those is not a goal. Uh, does that, it, it seemed like you were assuming that it was a goal. I mean, it, it strikes me as weird, but like, that's fine. Like, um, I, I'm okay with that. I, uh, I agree with you when you say that there isn't a workable model to include the web without exposing that kind of information into the shadow realm. Shadow realms can also do uh, imports that end up indicating sort of where, where it is. They can do relative imports. And we decided that that's okay. Right. So, yeah, I'm, I'd, I'd be really curious to learn more given, given that context about what problems you found. 
Um, yeah, it, it's just thinking implementation wise, this is going to be invasive, um, but uh, tests will be extraordinarily helpful. Oh, great. Uh, insight about why it would be invasive. We all agree about tests. We have to write tests. Uh, we're not sure who's going to write the test, but we have to write them for sure. Uh, insight from you about why the implementation is invasive, even at a high level, would be really helpful. So the, the basic thrust of it is, is that so far, uh, Gecko and to, I believe, an extent, Blink, largely believe that there are exist two classes of globals. The class of globals that is a window and the class of globals that are workers. And so this includes uh, workers, service workers, worklets, all of that sort of stuff, right? And so at times, it, especially to handle the worker case, we have to uh, disambiguate which kind of global are we dealing with, right? So we have to say, uh, in the case of a worker, we have to consider the fact that that worker is actually working on a separate thread. And so we have to call into code that is thread safe, that has different accessors, that sort of thing, a different state of the world. And on the window case, we say, well, in the window case, we assume that we are running on main thread. We don't have to worry, uh, like the worker will have done all of the appropriate things to, to coordinate. Um, so we just go ahead and plow forwards. And all of these cases where it's like, if window else worker, they all need to be modified now to go and handle the case where, well, what if that global is actually a shadow global? So this is, the, I don't understand why this is an invasive change because I think at the library function where you check, am I in a window, that should, going back into where that function is implemented, because that predicate terrible. is implemented. <laughs> because the idea, the idea of changing the like is window um, check is terrifying because how much code assumes things about the nature of your global is enormous. And like this scares the crap out of me trying to do this in any way that is not extraordinarily rigorous. And the idea that like, oh, you know, it's okay if anything that is a shadow realm global says that it's a window is just a non-starter. That's never gonna happen because that is down that road lies security vulnerabilities coming up the wazoo. Right, they're just, you know, we we have so many checks that assume correctly, like if this is a window, we know things about that window. We are doing dynamic casting between types, like this. No, <laughs> like so, but that that's means good, that's good to understand. Like uh, but that means that we have to go through and we have to audit all of these cases, and then you have the problem of okay, so we went through and we audited the first level, like the you know, can a shadow realm get here sort of thing, but then. What I'm concerned about is like the web platform is stupidly complicated. So what happens when some random function gets a wrapped global or gets a wrapped function handler passed to it and the web platform says, well, use the global that comes from that function to do some other work. And it goes and does that other work and it ends up in code that was never audited for the purpose of whether or not you had a shadow realm global and now it explodes again, right? So it, I, <laughs> this is the thing that I... I get scared when I started implementing this because of this question. And the, the question of like, even delegation, the idea that like, well, if you're a shadow realm global, then report the answer of what is your enclosing global is mostly reasonable. But again, it's gonna require us to every place that you have to know questions about your global, go through and figure out, is delegation the correct answer here? Is delegation gonna provide a correct answer? And as I said, I'm just, it, I don't, I'm not a DOM person who does this daily. Like my DOM experience is comparatively limited. I went through, I implemented the streams API in, DOM, in the DOM. Like I have some familiarity with basic principles and that sort of thing. But when I went through and I started trying to do this, the encounters that I had made me go, this is scary. And I'm, you know, it, it is not a small proposal. It is like, this is getting its tendrils into every inch of the web platform. And that makes me uncomfortable. Um, and this is like feedback that will be going to the people who I track down who are like on the HTML side from us. Uh, great, yeah, as long as this feedback gets around to the people who are on the HTML side of the spec thing, that's reasonable for them to 
to to address. Um, maybe Shu, if you're able to ask your HTML people if they share this concern that Matt raised. Yeah, we agree with the concerns, especially around the testing, but also just the kind of the spec audit, like the, the, the semantics audit that needs to be done for the web APIs. We share the concern. Um, but I think the, the higher bit here is the it's the root is 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 a the root concern is a staffing concern. Like I don't have a good suggestion for who needs to own the work, but I can tell you that the browser vendors, the web platform folks are not going to be volunteering to do this audit. So to push this forward, um, somebody needs to actually, this effort needs to be staffed. And I think that's the, 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 the thing that needs to be resolved. At, at a spec level, I believe MS Tuger did do this audit as part of proposing what the shape of the global is. It sounds like the audit is more of an implementation audit. But if browsers don't well, want to stack the implementation. The performance markers, just as an example, I thought that was, there was like, the, the, the spec language for the semantics of what that API does um, needs to be, needs well, to take account into Shadow Realms. My, my, my criticism there has been addressed in the sense that the answer is it should just do what the actual uh, enclosing global does, which, you know, was surprising to me, but I'm willing to take that. Oh, uh, I see. Then I have to understand. So, like, that particular concern has sort of been addressed for my part. Um, it, it just means, like, the level of isolation that I thought Shadow Realms had is distinct from the actual level of isolations that Shadow Realms is aiming for. And so that was an expectations mismatch more than anything else. Um, I do think there is some questions about whether or not that audit was sufficiently correct because, for example, performance mark does still have an issue, which is that there is an assumption that there is a uh, performance object that you are working with. And whether or not it is acceptable for you to use the performance object associated with your enclosing global, I don't know. Um, maybe it's fine. Uh, it, it Again, it's just like, it starts to get a little bit weird. Like, can you, you know, you can create these performance marks, but you can't actually register them anywhere. So they'll never show up in the performance timeline. They're, the performance object exists only implicitly accessible via performance mark, but it needs to exist for you to do it. Like, it's a weird, that, that's a weird one, for sure. We're One coming of my up. concern uh, that I've had, and uh, which is why I wanted to, and I pushed to have those invariants uh, included in the spec, was that there would be implementation, host implementation issues where um, one API looks up uh, the enclosing global uh, and ends up uh, building a, a return object uh, that is built out of the uh, realm of the enclosing global instead of the shadow realm. Uh, and that is likely one of the complexities that will arrive, arise for the implementation that I have feared. Um, I, I don't know how related that is to what Matthew has been talking about, but... Um, I actually forgot about that. That's actually a, a real legit problem that we've run into in uh, streams because the web standard really tends not to actually ever say anything about where should a thing be constructed? What is the actual global that needs to be used? A lot of times it's implicit and it's done through a variety of implicit mechanisms and those implicit mechanisms don't always agree either. And so we run into places where even we have uh, compatibility issues where different browsers decide to build things in different, uh, in, uh, like in different globals. And so now we have this problem where if you're doing this inside of a shadow realm, the expectation is, is that you're always going to get a wrapped object back, but the mechanism, there is no real mechanism in order to enforce that wrapping um, like we would have to build a custom web IDL binding system in order to actually enforce that properly. And again, like this is a lot of work. Yeah, I don't, yeah. on that, I don't think you're gonna get it right. It's just that the object has to be created with the identity specified by the ROM, not the, the, the main window. We're uh, coming up on time for this meeting. So I would yeah. like to summarize what we've heard. Um, and if I may go first, I'd be happy to. The uh, Essentially, Matthew brings to us implementer concerns that will need to be addressed. How they are addressed is a graduated scale from no, globe, no additional host APIs, which we know is unacceptable, to a whole bunch of web APIs, which we also know is 
as that set increases, the complexity of the problem increases. We all, we know that we need to write tests. We need we know that we need to find someone to write those tests and to staff that effort. We know that the browser vendors, at least Google, will not be footing that bill. Mozilla probably won't be footing that bill. Uh, and so we need to find some uh, someone who can do that. Another thing um, less uh, less discussed, I think, is that even in the absence uh, even in the absence of any host APIs, it remains the compl complicating problem that uh, that uh, browsers pervasively discriminate which kind of global there is, and we're introducing an, uh, a, a third type, if not an open-ended set of types of uh, of global, um, uh, which is feedback that we've heard before, especially in the context of the compartments proposal, which will uh, compound that issue. So solving that here would be good in order to make way for that. Um, and that's what I've heard. Um, Matthew, I see your hand. Yeah, it was more full of that. But that's one thing actually I wanted to follow up with uh, uh, about what Chu said, and uh, I, I didn't quite understand. Um, if it is web host that wants uh, to make sure the global APIs available in the shadow realm are uh, include web APIs. Um, it does feel like it should be on the web hosts uh, dime to make sure those are actually implementable uh, in uh, in shadow realm. I, I I just don't think that logic is going to work. I think we're we're pushing this proposal. We we have to do the work. To, you you can't logic your way out of this. Uh, overall, given that we don't have this worked out, um, I think we should propose next meeting to retract the proposal to stage two, because it's been this proposal has been at stage three for a long time. It's had known gaps known to the champions. The champions have not worked on it, uh, and that's uh, not a good state for a stage three proposal to be in. We should be signaling clearly whether or not this is ready to implement and ship. Uh, and while folks are mulling on that, I see Carity's hand for closing comments. Yeah, on the, on the actual work, the, we have, I have two items in my list. One of them was to um, get people that work with me and so forth to do the spec changes for the global to be a event target global or a, a global with event target capabilities. So that is pending for us to send the pull request. And um, and the other one is to write tests or some tests for the web integration. So we probably can squeeze a little bit of work out of that team and getting maybe Rick to write some of these tests. And the spec should be, I think they're at the end of the release, so they will have time the next month or so to work on the, on the spec for that little piece, not for the audit, but just that little piece that was already decided. Uh, I think it was the Dominic proposal for making the global event target. So those are the two things that I have in my, my plate. All right, we're at time. Thank you much. Thank you very much. And thank you, especially to Matthew for bringing this topic. Um, if, uh, of course, if you need further time, our agenda is an openly editable document. And I look forward to seeing you all again. Yeah, thanks, Matthew. Hi. Thanks. Uh, sorry, there were a couple things that I wanted to go over. Is are we? Is Math? I guess Matthew might have left, but uh, it's been a. It's oh no, Matthew's still there. It's been quite a long-running discussion about whether things like fetch will be included. Are we drawing a conclusion today that fetch won't be included, or do we need to keep debating it? I think it, it sure has been very clear, and, and my perception is that. If we don't have fetch, we don't have those APIs, they are not okay with that. Uh, it's just the reality of the situation. Okay, I'm happy with drawing that conclusion. Matthew, are you satisfied? I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay if those are not there. I'm, I am just sad that some use cases uh, are gonna make be made a lot more complicated by uh, those APIs missing. I, I think that you've got the bit flipped. Uh, uh, my understanding is that the, 
that Shu said that such APIs, at least like Fetch, would need to be included for the proposal to be uh, interesting. Right. <laughs> so, yes. Wait, yeah. right. but any, not any but not Fetch, just other ones. Yes. Or was Shu saying yeah, that I'm, Fetch should be included? I, I do have to go, but be, but before I go, my our, our position is that um, I do not want the the list of APIs included on Shadow Realms to be just 262. Um, it should not be the, the bound, like the line should not be drawn at standard organization bodies. Um, but what is the set of web APIs that is appropriate? We're much more fluid on that. Uh, that I just think that that set is, is not like, I don't think it's defensible to say that set should be empty. Um, whether fetch is in that set or not, I'm leaning yes, but if there are, you know, truly compelling reasons that we shouldn't include it, then we're, we can entertain those reasons. Um, but the, the reason can't be because it's not in 262. Like that is not a good reason. All right. All right. Great. So, so if we don't have a conclusion today on this question, another action item for Carity and that, that team will be to decide what is the set and what is the organizing principles around what is the set of which interfaces are exposed. Uh, because that is something that, that previously uh, Leo Balter worked on, but a consistent answer was not reached. And that was a concern that the browsers previously raised. Yeah, I don't think I, I will be able to get to a conclusion uh, or or having a proposal okay. from, from my group. Oh. Um, well, I'll have to be okay. brainstorm among these these people in this this call to try okay. to figure that out. All right, folks, yeah. I'm pushing uh, out. Please put more time on the agenda for the next meeting or subsequent. Are, <laughs> we are all people have... okay with retracting the proposal? Or okay, bye. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>